Hey guys, in this video I'd like to talk a little bit about the difference between epistemological saliency and epistemological relevancy. So this is an interesting kind of dichotomy I found to help navigate some tricky puzzles of what we're certain we don't know and the implications of that. Uh, so saliency generally is a word that means how pressing or important something is. If something is very, very salient, it becomes, you know, it's the topic that we're discussing, it's important, we have to address it. Logical relevancy is generally talking about what is the material connection or logical connection between uh, two statements or facts or concepts. So something is uh, relevant, yeah, it's materially connected and kind of logically connected. To a claim. So in epistemology, we're talking about theory of knowledge. How do we know something? The word knowledge, of course, is used across many, if not all, languages. It's one of the most common words in the world. You know, I know, you know, <laughs> um, I know I have socks on. She said this. I remember that. These are knowledge claims. And so the difference between saliency and relevancy in this conversation is quite closely connected to the concept of certainty in knowledge. How certain are you of something? For example, let's say uh, Billy is walking out of work and Tammy says, Oh, Billy, did you lock up the work behind you? Oh, yeah, I think I, I, think I did. I'm pretty sure. I, yeah, I, locked it. I kind of remember locking it. You know, it might have been yesterday that I locked it, but I, yeah, I locked it. I remember I locked it. Yeah. Versus, you know, Billy walks out of work and then a police officer is there. You know, maybe a SWAT you know, team is there in full combat gear. You know, did you just leave that building? Did you lock it behind you? There's someone, you know, an active shooter right behind you. Did, do you remember for sure if you locked it or not? Oh, um, maybe I'm not so sure, right? That degree of certainty can be very contextual. Uh, you say, oh yeah, I know this versus actually how certain am I, right? Now, the, the topic of saliency and relevancy comes up in a lot of arguments in philosophy. Uh, philosophers really like to argue, you know, could this, could this be possible, you know? Um, and the form of the argument goes like this. It's, it's just the single counter example argument, basically. Um, all animals have hair. Someone says, all animals have hair. And someone else says, well, that's not a true statement because here is an example of one animal that doesn't, like a snake, doesn't have hair. Therefore, it's not true that all animals have hair. And so that's the same form of argument that's being used here. Um, you claim to know something, but isn't it true that the contradictory might be the case? So for example, Someone says, do you know for sure there's no jelly donuts on Mars? Do you know there's no pile of jelly donuts on Mars? I say, well, I don't know that. I mean, I know there's no jelly donuts on Mars, but I, I don't know for sure that there's not, right? That, like, there maybe there might be, like there's one in a trillion chance that there might just randomly be a pile of jelly donuts there for no reason. I mean, maybe, right? Um, but, but there's more practical examples start to come up. Let's use the example of, I know that my bus is coming at 7 a.m. You know, 6 a.m., I'm about to leave. I'm chatting with my friend on the way to work. Uh, what time does the bus come? Oh, it comes at 7. You know that for sure? Well, yeah, of course, it comes at 7 every day. I mean, it's coming at 7, and I check it. Well, do you know for sure that the bus drivers are not on strike today? Oh. Yeah, do you know that they're not on strike? No, I, I, I didn't know I'm on a strike. No, just I'm just asking you. Do you know if they're on strike for sure? Well, no, I don't know that. Well, then you don't know if it's coming at seven. Wait a minute. So what's going on here? So basically in this scenario, what's happening with these sort of claims is that the speaker who is apparently bringing up something out of the blue is saying, hey, this is important consideration. This is salient. We have to consider this. If you want to continue talking to me, we have to address the fact, is it possible that there was an explosion at the train station? Is it possible that the bus driver's on strike? This is important, we have to consider this. 
um, that you don't know the bus is coming at seven. And so again, that ties into that concept of how certain are you, but it's a little bit of a different concept. Now, the person who's focusing on relevancy is saying, listen, we were just talking about, you know, what time the bus is coming at. And I'm just saying that I know the bus is coming at seven o'clock, even though I don't know that there's not an explosion at the, the station. I don't know whether they're on strike, but I know for sure the bus is coming at seven. There's a different kind of emphasis placed on the, um, the conclusion there. Um, so there's lots of more kind of classic examples that may seem more obscure, but they're kind of still useful to think about for that reason, because these kind of puzzles do kind of pop up in daily life. And, uh, so, you know, the classic examples are probably uh, Descartes' meditation on the demon. Uh, you know, what if an evil demon, like some very intelligent being in the universe, is misleading us and causing us to perceive reality in a certain way, but we're actually not experiencing that. It's actually not true that one plus one equals two. Uh, you know, we're just being misled to perceive this world around us, but it's actually not the way we experience it. Other examples are like in The Matrix, the movie. You know, all the, the human beings are bodies floating in vats of fluid with like bathtubs, sort of like tubs of fluid with like electrical wires in their spine and brain. And they think that they are walking around in the ordinary world with their day-to-day -day lives, but actually they're really just floating on, you know, in these vats along a tower. Another example is just the brain in the vat. Couldn't it be the case that we're really uh, in a simulation, that we are a brain floating in a, a bathtub or vat and some alien scientist or some advanced scientist is putting electrical impulses into our brain to make us uh, perceive the world or you know there's religious concepts of this too of sort of incarnation of some sort that we're really like some sort of being um, contemplating reality and we're becoming from that thought so there's all kinds of scenarios right that um, that I would say generally come from this position of salience and saying, well, could this be the case? Might it be true? And then someone else will say, well, how is that connected to my definition of knowledge? So I use knowledge maybe in a, maybe I require a higher or lower degree of certainty, but however I use the word knowledge, I know that I have two hands, hand one, hand two. That's all the proof I need. I know that I have two hands. And you say, out of the blue, well, couldn't it be the case that you're really a brain in the vat? Okay, how is that materially connected or logically connected to my claims of knowledge, my ordinary commonplace use of the word that I know that I have two hands? You say, well, it's, it's important because I brought it up, because I said it. No, like, how is that connected? How are jelly donuts and demons and... Um, you know, brains in vats, how is that connected <laughs> to my ordinary reality, right? Like, how is that connected to my experience of the word I'm using knowledge, right? So you can go ahead and, you know, require both your absolute degree of certainty, uh, your omniscient knowledge, and at the same time also demanding that we talk about a certain topic. But I'm just saying, like, what's the connection here, man? <laughs> so again, I think these are... Um, you know, I think there's good arguments on both sides here and, you know, worth considering, uh, you know, different scenarios, um, different circumstances, you know, both perspectives. But, um, you know, I think it's a helpful way to pull apart some of these concepts of, uh, you know, what conclusions will you draw? So in the bus driver example, the one, the person who emphasizes saliency is going to say, you know, A knows, you know, Billy knows that the bus is coming at seven, but Billy does not know that the bus drivers are not on strike. Therefore, Billy does not know that the bus is coming at seven. The kind of logical relevancy argument is gonna argue, you know, Billy knows the bus is coming at seven. He does not know that the bus drivers are not on strike, but he knows the bus is coming at seven, right? He knows that. Um, so it's like really a kind of a different, <laughs> how, you, how you go through that. Um, this is a helpful uh, tool that I found in epistemology, and thanks for checking in, guys.